Minnesota is a beautiful state with an abundance of lakes, forests, prairies, fish, and wildlife. To that end, two decades ago, former state Senator Bob Lassard successfully spearheaded an amendment to Minnesota's constitution to enshrine hunting and fishing as rights and to provide additional dedicated funding for the outdoors. The funding has dwindled and Senator Carrie Rood has a measure to restore it to its original intent. And she now joins me in the studio. Welcome. Thank you. Tell us about lottery in lieu of taxes. What is it and why has the funding level diminished over time? You know, um, Bob Lassart was in our committee and he did a great job testifying. It's, such, it's so fun to have history in your, in your committee to, to tell us all that happened. Well, when he passed that constitutional amendment, they had to figure out, well, how do we pay for this wonderful thing that we just put in the Constitution? So they passed the lottery. And the first lottery tickets were sold in 1990. Now, 60% of the lottery funds go to the general fund and 40% go to the Legislative Commission on Minnesota Resources. And so that, that fund, they do a tremendous job and they, they fund all sorts of wonderful projects. But there's no sales tax on the lottery tickets. So they decided it's called lottery in lieu. So we pretend there's sales tax on the, on the lottery ticket. And that money, that six point, what is it, 75%, that goes into a special pool. And that goes for the Game and Fish Fund, Parks and Trails, a little bit goes towards the zoo. And so it really funds that, that piece that we were kind of missing. And uh, former Senator Lassard, who I did reference, and, and so did you, he testified on behalf of this bill. As you said, he told the committee that when he was first passing this legislation or attempting to get it passed, he was warned that lawmakers would have a hard time keeping their hands out of the cookie jar. And you referred to the diversion of funds over time as mission creep. So if the fund is fully restored so that all the money goes where it should go and not be diverted to the general fund, um, is it possible to ensure that it doesn't, no one draws from it again in the future? Um, I think that's a very good point. Um, you know, uh, Bob Lassard said, don't tinker with the funds. He shook his finger at me and I'm like, yeah, okay, I get it, Bob. Um, but, you know, I, I chair the legacy amendment and it's the same thing there. That is, that is off the sales tax. And um, I am adamant that that money um, be spent the way the Constitution wants it to. And so it's a fight. And those of us that believe that the people voted for those things in the Constitution, we have to stand strong to make sure that there is not that mission creep, that it's spent for things it wasn't supposed to. And so that's why the funds kind of got diverted, um, because we had a budget crunch right after that. And it is a pot of money and it's very tempting, but we have to stop that. And I think that's why this bill is important, because we're going to restore that promise to the, to the people and say, nope, you voted for this, this is what we said we we're gonna do. Now's the time to restore that. We have a, a budget that we can manage this. And so when we had that deficit, we took the money, let's put it back and let's do what we promised the people we were supposed to do. Now you mentioned a moment ago how that money is split up a little to the DNR, some for Metro Parks and Trails, a little bit for the zoo. I'm a transplant to Minnesota and one of the things that I love is that even here in the metro area I have access to numerous amazing parks. What does it mean for the people who take care of these parks to have this funding coming to them? You know, it's really interesting. Over the pandemic, we have loved our parks just to death because people spent time in the outdoors and they, re, um, they reinvigorated themselves in the parks. And so now we, we realize that our parks need some help. And so this extra money would help that. And we also re realize that our parks aren't are we always accessible to everyone. And that's very important that we do that. So we need to do some of the um, basic things like paths, restrooms, make sure that everyone is welcome in those parks. And, and this extra money will help us do that. And as everyone in Minnesota likely knows, the state has a sizable surplus right now. Is that part of the reason why you're bringing this legislation now, because the state can afford to restore this funding to this fund? Yeah, absolutely correct, because when we didn't have the funds, they took the money. So now that we have some extra funds, it's time to pay it back. So I'm, I'm excited that, you know, we have a, just a broad base of stakeholders that just love um, this bill. And, and we're at 72% um, of the money going in, and it should be 97%. And so this would make a really big difference um, for our parks and trails and our zoos um, going forward.
Now, I'd like to turn to another topic because I was so sorry that I missed your press conference <laughs> this week because there were puppies, and who doesn't love to see puppies? You were the chief author of a bill that would establish a companion animal board. What would be the purpose of this board? Well, we see that the um, Board of Animal Health, we have actually kept putting more jobs on them and more jobs. So when we addressed the puppy mill issue many years ago, we gave that to them. And now we have CWD, uh, Chronic Wasting Deeds and Deer, we gave that to them. And so now we have a lot of rescue animals and service dogs, and they take care of that. And so their main mission is to keep Minnesota's food source from disease and, and make sure that we have good food. That's, that's their mission statement. But now um, that's agriculture and pets are not agriculture. And so we think that they really, we really need to have, the board would function underneath the Board of Animal Health, um, but the Board of Animal Health de deals with disease, we would not. We would deal with the care of companion animals. And COVID-19 certainly has, has brought an increase of companion animals <clears throat> into people's lives. Uh, there, there are ongoing issues with that. And also animals have become more important to people. And there's kind of a difference now. Uh, the co-sponsor or the, the sponsor in the house is Representative Mike Freiberg. He spoke about the unique bond between humans and animals. I think attitudes have changed over time. You're talking about animals for food, this is about animals for pets, but is there a problem down the road when one person's food is another person's pet? <laughs> well, actually, companion animal is actually uh, defined in statute, and it does not, and it specifically precludes agriculture animals. And so there is kind of like a little, if you have a pet chicken, I, you know, I, I'm not sure, but that, that chicken is considered agriculture. It is considered, it would be under the Board of Animal Health. This is just for, um, you know, companion animals. And you're right, our attitudes have changed because dogs were working. Dogs were sheep dogs. Dogs did, worked on the farm. Um, they, they did all sorts of really working animals. Now they become really pets. We brought them into our homes. There, you don't see too many dog houses out with a chain anymore because we brought them into our family, into our homes. So absolutely the attitude has changed towards our pets and the breeds have changed. Um, there's so many different uh, breeds of, of dogs that you did not see before. And so this board then would just kind of be a resource then for people and, and do investigation in potentially uh, if in unsafe environments for, for companion animals? We think so. Um, we're bringing a lot of rescue animals into this, this state. 70% um, of Minnesotans own a dog. I think 95% think, think they're part of the family. But um, Minnesota is a very dog-friendly state or very companion animal state. And so we really need to take a look at that. And I, we think that this will take the stress off the board when they have to deal with the, uh, there's avian flu again in the United States. That's their mission to make sure we have a solid food, st food source and disease free food source. Um, CWD is very big um, with the deer hunters. And so we think that this will just augment their board. And then we can take care of all the wonderful companion animals and make sure that we have um, healthy animals and, um, you know, our loving pets. Senator Kerry Rood, what a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. It's been very fun. Thanks for having me.